all right everybody assalamu alaikum and today is a very special class why is that because of the reason today we are going to do the last of topic of uh, wait i just got a message here on the chat box i have to check it wait a bit i Okay, I can sum it. Okay, beta. So the thing is, uh, today is a very important lesson. Why is that? The lesson is important, uh, not because it is an extensive lesson, but because of the reason that uh, uh, after this lesson, our adrenergic pharmacology and our ANS would be completed. So this marks the last lecture of adrenergic pharmacology. Which is like great. Okay, so let's start. If you, uh, okay. All right. So if you guys look here on the screen, I have the topic mentioned, which is adrenergic receptor antagonist. When we talk about adrenergic receptor antagonist, so in front of you, let me admit people. Okay. So the thing is. When you look at the uh, topic adrenergic receptor antagonist, you already know by now that when we talk about adrenergic receptors, there are two receptors involved, which is alpha and beta, right? Okay. And when we talk about adrenergic receptor antagonist, it means that they are not just going to affect or block the alpha receptors, but they are also going to block the beta receptors, right? Okay. So here, if you see, uh, there is another name. Uh, but, uh, for uh, if you remember, when we talked about adrenergic receptor agonist, we mentioned the other name for this classification as sympathomimetic, right? So the other name for this uh, particular classification of drug for this class of drug is sympathomimetic. Okay, adrenergic receptor agonist or sympathomimetic. Okay, so um, here I am presenting the summary in front of you all. By now, since you have also given the quiz on this topic, so by now I do expect you all to uh, know what exactly alpha and beta receptors do. So I'm not going to talk in more depth, okay? Uh, here we are going to talk about drug, the receptor on which they act, the special features, if they're present and then we are going to talk about the major uses all right all right so the first drug by the way the drugs which are mentioned in bold letters okay they are the prototypes okay prototypes are the main compounds all right uh, all right so the thing is the first drug in front of us is uh, fentolamine right and this acts by blocking the receptors alpha 1 and alpha 2. The important feature which you should remember about this is that this is a very short acting drug and it acts for only one to two hours. And its major use to, is to treat hypertension of pure chromocytoma. Now you see guys, whenever you see this word OMA, you do understand that this is a tumor. Now, what is this tumor about? Wait. Here, you see there are two kidneys. On top of one kidney uh, the, the, here, okay, on top of the kidneys here, you see adrenal gland is here, and it is completely in its normal state. So it will produce adrenaline in a uh, tolerable range. However, when we look at this side of the screen, so we would see that here on top, we see something is messed up on this particular kidney, right? On this particular adrenal gland. So what is this messed up situation here is a tumor. And when we have a tumor in adrenal gland, it means that now it will produce excessive, excessive uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline. If you guys remember, we talked 
about the effects of uh, a, a, the adrenaline and non-adrenaline. All right, everybody. So I was talking about here that when excessive hormones would be produced, right? So imagine how the body would be, uh, uh, you know, uh, it would be overactive, isn't it? The blood pressure would be more, always the body would be in a uh, flight and fight situation, right? Um, the blood would be more towards the periphery, less towards the digestive system. The people would be dilated and so many other effects that we have already studied so far, right? So in order to treat that, imagine uh, the noradrenaline uh, and the adrenal uh, secretions are already there. And imagine um, the adrenal gland, okay, it's hyperactive and then you give uh, this drug. So it shuts it down and then everything gets back to normal. All right. So the other drug that we have to talk about is Phenoxybenzamine. Okay. Uh, again, this is bold. You should notice. Okay. And its feature is it has long duration of action, which is 15 to 50 hours. And it also uh, it treats the same thing. Okay. All right. Then is Prazosin. All right. It acts by uh, blocking alpha 1 receptor. All right. And its major feature is it has. Minimal reflex tachycardia. All right. And its major use is mild to moderate hypertension. Offer of, uh, and um, it's often given with a diuretic or beta, beta adrenal receptor antagonist. It's also used to treat for a severe congestive heart failure with a uh, cardiac glycoside and a diuretic. Now, what is this diuretic? The diuretic is a medicine which releases water out of the body, okay? A beta adrenal receptor antagonist, you know that, right? Okay, severe congestive heart failure. Uh, I am sure you remember the slide which I showed to you last time, um, that how exactly the walls thickened up and everything, right? If you have forgotten, go back to my previous lecture and see the recording, okay? All right, then is... The, these both drugs, that is terazosin and doxazin, all right, it's used to treat mild to moderate hypertension. This drug, propranolol, it's acting to block by blocking beta 1 and beta 2 receptors and is given as a uh, local anesthetic, okay, so it's because it has local anesthetic activity. The major uses are to treat hypertension. Angina, again, uh, again, pheochromocytoma, uh, cardiac arrhythmia, migraine, headache, hypertrophic subaortic stenosis. Now, what is this? Uh, hypertrophic means something that builds up more, right? Wait a minute. I have attached the diagram here. You see here, okay? The hypertrophy is there, okay? You see the normal ventricle and the large enlarged one okay all right so the thing is that it is used to treat this condition the other drug which is timolol it is used to treat hypertension and glaucoma uh, the other drug which is metriprenolol and levobenilol it both are both of these are used to treat glaucoma then the other drug that you have in front of you is um, nadolol. So it has this longer duration of action, which is 15 to 25 hours long. And again, if you see these three drugs, okay, they are, uh, these three drugs, okay, they are used to treat uh, hypertension and angina, right? Okay. So uh, then we have pendolol which is partial beta receptor, it has uh, agonist activity, but it's partially, okay? So, but then again, it's used to treat it. Then it's penbutylol. So again, partial beta receptor, agonist activity, mild to moderate hypertension, it causes, because of course, beta receptor um, 
pumps heart more, right? Then is cratolone. So again, it has partial beta receptor, agonist activity, excreted unchanged, and it's used to treat angina, hypertension, and glaucoma. Then we have metoprolol, uh, which has more beta-1 and less beta-2 activity. And its major feature is that patient, uh, patient bioavailability is variable. Extended release forms are available for this medicine. And it's again used for, to treat hypertension and angina. Uh, then again, this drug I've seen a lot of people using, and, which is ethanolol. And it's eliminated by kidney, again used to treat hypertension and angina. Then we have esconol. It is ultra short acting drug, which is hardly for 10 minutes, okay? And it treats supraventricular uh, tachycardia. Now, what is that? Supra means above, okay? Ventricle, above ventricles, or tachycardia. It means that this tachycardia, tachy, what is tachycardia? If you remember, tachycardia is that uh, the heart beats faster right a lot faster so this supraventricular tachycardia means that this is due to um intense activity of uh, the, the uh, sanav node okay so there is a lot of um, electrical transmission due to which this is happening okay wait a minute okay then we have uh bitazolol Again, it has a longer duration of action, which is like 50 to 25 hours, and it is used to treat glaucoma and hypertension. Then is esbitolol, which is partial agonist, and it treats hypertension and ventricular arrhythmias. What is arrhythmia? Arrhythmia is, uh, see, when we look at the heartbeat, so it is very much synchronized, isn't it? That up, go down, and bump there. So, like, it's pretty much synchronized, right? But when we talk about arrhythmia, it means that here the rhythms are not normal, okay? Sometimes they're faster, sometimes they're slower, sometimes there's a gap, so the arrhythmias are there, okay? So the arrhythmias are treated by as we do long. okay? Then is, lots of light, okay? Then there is uh, levitolol. Uh, so it blocks beta 1, beta 2, and alpha 1 receptor, partial agonist activity is there so rapid blood pressure reduction local anesthetic activity it has and it is given to treat mild to severe hypertension hypertensive emergencies right everybody that is it that was all for the um, this lecture thank you so much